Hello sports fans, it is Monday, January the 7th, the year 2013, and as usual, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Let's recap the NFL Wild Card Weekend. Let's start with the Saturday games. The Houston Texans at home beat the Cincinnati Bengals 19-13, a game the Texans had a win, a game Coach Kubiak of the Texans had a win, a game the quarterback Matt Schaub for the Texans had to have. The Texans couldn't afford to lose this game. If they lost this game, the Texan fans would have been outraged. They would want everyone out. They would want Kubiak out. They'd want a new quarterback. As it was during the game, the Texan fans were getting a little restless. They were booing during this game at one point. But the Texans do get the job done. At least it takes some pressure off of them. They had to have this game. They get the job done. Their defense carried the day here. Houston's still a little spotty. They settled for too many field goals. They settled for four field goals. They could have put this game away early. They let Cincinnati hang around. Cincinnati actually at the end of the game had a chance to take the lead. Dalton misses Green wide open in the end zone. That would have given Cincinnati the lead. So Houston does get through, but they still have to play better going forward. It's funny, Cincinnati at the beginning of the year was a very good offensive team and didn't play any defense. At the end of the year, Cincinnati's offense struggled and their defense played a lot better. So I do like the foundation Cincinnati set this year. They do have some nice young players. They do have a nice young defense. I like Dalton. I like Green on offense. I like the direction Cincinnati is going in. Their offense kind of sputtered at the end of the year and sputtered in this playoff game. As far as the Texans... They have to do a better job converting in the red zone. They cannot keep settling for field goals. They did that in this game. That almost came back to bite them. They do get the job done. Forster on the ground was very good. Schaub, who had a very bad interception at the beginning of the game that give, gave Cincinnati the 7-6 lead, he did play decently other than that interception. And Houston's defense, like I said, carried the day. Houston's defense solid here. Houston gets the job done. Houston at New England next week. Houston has to play a whole lot better because if you remember, New England drubbed them this year like 42-14 to just a few weeks ago. So Houston's got to play a lot better next week. Let's go to the Saturday night game. The Green Bay Packers at historic Lambeau Field beat the Minnesota Vikings 24-10. to <clears throat> Listen, the story of this game is right before the game, the quarterback of the Vikings, Ponda, was ruled out. Webb started his first career playoff start. As soon as, you know, Ponda was ruled out, this game was over. You didn't even have to watch this game. Minnesota did go down on their first drive and kick a field goal. from, But from that point on, it was all Green Bay. Green Bay at one point led 24-3. Minnesota does get a you know a fourth quarter touchdown to make it a little respectable at 24-10. But as soon as Ponder couldn't play and Webb came in the game, the game was over. Webb, I mean, you can't ask the young guy to, to go into Lambeau Field and beat the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, come on, that's asking a lot. And I didn't like Minnesota before this. I don't love Ponder, but Ponder is better than Webb. Uh, Green Bay, again, they got a few injuries, so we'll keep an eye on that as they go to San Francisco this week. Rodgers was good. The receivers were good. Defense played a lot better. Matthews had a couple sacks. He forced a fumble. Woodson back in the secondary always helps. Green Bay, you got to watch these injuries. Once again, they got all banged up. That's been the story of the year for Green Bay, all banged up. When they're healthy and playing you know, on top of their game, Green Bay can beat anyone. So Green Bay gets the job done here. Green Bay at San Francisco next week. A very interesting game. Very, very intriguing game. We'll talk about that more on Thursday. So that was your Saturday games. Yesterday on Sunday, the early game, the Baltimore Ravens at home beat the Indianapolis Colts 24-9. Baltimore's defense was good. Ray Lewis came back and had a nice game, his final home game as a Raven. Offense got going in the second half. Raven offense wasn't good in the first half, but they got going in the second half. Flacco played much better in the second half. Uh, Bolden, the receiver, had a much better second half. He was invisible in the first half, had a very good second half. Uh, as we know, Andrew Luck, although his statistics weren't awful, he's a better quarterback at home right now. He struggles on the road. I mean, he is a rookie. We all forget that. He didn't have a tremendous game yesterday. Baltimore, a lot of penalties yesterday and turnovers in big spots. Ray Rice had two fumbles. 
Baltimore actually kept Indianapolis in the game for a lot of this game. I mean, this game was very close at one point, and it was all because of Baltimore's miscues. Like I said, Ray Rice fumbles twice. Baltimore, a ton of penalties yesterday. they got to get that cleaned up. As far as the Colts, before the game, their offensive coordinator gets sick. He goes to the hospital, so who knows what kind of effect that had on the Colts. Colts, they're another team. They, had, they set a nice foundation this year with luck and the coaching staff. Really nice foundation. The Colts are going to be good for years to come, led by Andrew Luck. Wasn't meant to be yesterday. You know, they don't have a great team. You know, a little lack of experience for Luck yesterday. Can't expect them to go into Baltimore yesterday and win. Future is bright for Indianapolis. Baltimore gets the job done yesterday, but they are another team like Houston. Baltimore's got to play a heck of a lot better next week as they go to Denver, or they're going to get blown out. They cannot turn the ball over, and they cannot have all these penalties. And remember, Baltimore short week next week in Denver. That's a Saturday game. We'll keep an eye on that. Let's go to the late game yesterday. Very interesting game. Seattle beats Washington 24-14 in Washington. Washington's first two possessions, they go down the field and score. It's 14-0 Redskins, and you think the Seahawks are going to be blown out. Clemens, the best pass rusher for Seattle, goes out with a torn ACL, and you think this game is over. Not so fast. From there, Seattle stabilizes the game. They get a field goal to get to 14-13, and then 14-3. Uh, then the biggest play of the game, I thought, at 14-3 Redskins, Wilson, the quarterback for Seattle, fumbles, and Lynch, the running back for Seattle, picks it up, and not only picks it up, runs down the sidelines for a huge game. That sets up a Seattle touchdown. That makes it 14-10. They make it 14-13 uh, at the half, and they dominate the second half. They actually could have scored a, a, a bunch of more points. They actually were down at the one-yard line. Lynch fumbled at the one, but Seattle dominated this game in the second half. The total yards in the second half was just very one-sided, and Robert Griffin III hobbling the whole game. Looked very hurt, actually came out at the end of the game. Cousins did come in at the end. Uh, now they're questioning Shanahan, should Griffin have played, should he have not played. Very tough call for Shanahan. I mean, Griffin is telling him, I want to be in the game. Hard to go against your you know, star quarterback of the future there. You kind of let him make the decision there. He said he was fine. He said he wanted to go in. He said it didn't affect his throwing at all. He said, yeah, he couldn't accelerate on the running, but it didn't affect his throwing. Who knows, Shanahan and let him play. Griffin hobbles off at the end of the game. Like I said, Cousins finished up in mop-up duty for the Redskins. By that time, the Seahawks had put this game away. Seahawks get the job done. They beat Washington 24-14. Washington, another team that has set the groundwork this year for a nice future. Robert Griffin III is going to be a star. We all like him. Shanahan's going to build around him. I like what I see from Washington. And Seattle, what a tremendous job by Seattle, and they're not just a home team anymore. They used to be home heavy, now they can take their act on the road. Wilson, the rookie quarterback, has done a tremendous job. They have a good running game with Lynch. Their defense is ferocious. I really like what I see from Seattle. Seattle at Atlanta next week, I give them a chance to win that game. I do favor Atlanta, but I give Seattle a chance. Clemens, the Seattle pass rusher, looks like he tore his ACL. That would be a very big loss for Seattle. We'll get the word on that later on today. Keep an eye on that injury. That could be a significant injury for Seattle. Seattle gets the job done. So that is your wild card games for this past weekend. Like I said, next weekend, Houston at New England, Green Bay at San Francisco, Baltimore at Denver, Seattle at Atlanta. We'll get into those games as the week goes on. We'll cover them all on Thursday. We'll make our picks on Thursday. So that is where you are in your NFL. Uh, transitioning a little bit, uh, real quick, some college bowl scores since we last left on Thursday. Oregon in the Fiesta, blo uh, Fiesta Bowl blew out Kansas State. I mean, Oregon's offense is uh, too much for anyone to handle. I mean, Oregon's offense is very explosive. Uh, Kelly, uh, the, uh, the coach of Oregon, will stay with Oregon. He's out of the running for the Cleveland Browns job. It looks like he wants to stay in college. I'm happy about that. Kelly fits at Oregon. He has a niche at Oregon. He's built that program up really high. I mean, they're at a high level now. They were in the national title game a few years ago when they lost to Auburn. They're in the top ten every year. I'm glad Kelly st uh, stays with Oregon. Uh, some other scores, the Cotton Bowl on Friday, Texas A&M with a big second half, blew out Oklahoma. Manziel, the quarterback for Texas A&M, over 500 yards. He's your Heisman Trophy winner. What a fabulous player, only a freshman. Still got three more years with him, and he's going to be fabulous. Oklahoma, very disappointed in them this year. And Bob Stoops, he's got he's to do a better job with Oklahoma. This is Oklahoma here. 
this is Oklahoma. I mean, you should be better than this. And Stoops has had a little run here where he hasn't been so great. So Stoops, got to get it turned around in Oklahoma. Uh, on Saturday, Old Miss destroyed Peyton the Compass Bowl. And last night, Kent, uh, Arkansas State beat Kent State in the Go Daddy Bowl 17-13. Tonight, we got Alabama Notre Dame for your national championship. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, as far as some of the college basketball over the weekend, uh, Michigan blew out Northwestern. Gonzaga beat Pepperdine. Arizona beat Colorado in overtime. That was an interesting game because at the end of that game of regulation, Colorado hit a shot that appeared to win the game. Looked like the guy got it off in time. They initially said it was good. They reviewed it. Looked like it was good to me. Refs waved it off. They waved it off. Went to overtime. Arizona beat him. The Colorado State coach went nuts. And I think rightfully so. I think that shot should have counted. So Arizona escapes again. They have a knack of escaping, especially at home. Uh, Saturday, number one, Duke all over Wake Forest. Illinois bombed Ohio State. Nice win by Illinois. Gonzaga won at Santa Clara. Not easy to do. Marquette held off Georgetown in a very uh, interesting defensive game. Uh, yesterday, Michigan beat Iowa, and Kansas State rallied at home and beat Temple. Tonight, you got Notre Dame at Cincinnati and Indiana and at Penn State, so that's some of your college basketball. As far as your NBA, uh, the Knicks on Thursday, they beat the Spurs at Madison Square Garden. Friday, the Bulls had a nice win against Miami. Nice job by Chicago there. Clippers beat the struggling Lakers on Friday. Saturday, Boston had a nice win. They went into Atlanta and won. Nice win by the struggling Celtics. Uh, Clippers bombed Golden State. If you remember, Golden State had beat the Clippers a few days ago. Clippers come back and bombed Golden State. And last night, Denver goes into the Staples Center in Los Angeles and beats the Lakers as the Lakers continue to struggle. Dwight Howard will have an MRI on his shoulder. Gasol left with a, leaves with a bloody nose. Kobe Bryant complaining. The Lakers are a mess. A couple weeks ago, the Lakers had won five in a row. They were starting to show some signs of life. They reverted right back to their old form. I mean, the Lakers are struggling again. Don't like what I see at all from the Lakers. Tonight, you got Boston at the Knicks. Interesting game tonight. As far as the NHL, they are back in business. Looks like the season will start in two weeks. They got to get... You know, that all squared away as far as how long the season's going to be. Is it going to be 45 games, 48 games, 50 games? It'll be half a season. Look for the NHL in two weeks. And I want to mention, uh, mention this. The United States beat Sweden in the World Junior Championships in hockey in Sweden. The United States beat Sweden 3-1 to one to win the gold in the, uh, in the World Championships. So nice job by the United States uh, Junior Hockey Team winning that. They beat Canada in the semis. Beat Sweden in the finals at Sweden. If you remember, Sweden was the defending champion. Nice job by the United States. I wanted to mention that. Okay, let's get to the business tonight. The big game, the big national title game is finally here. I mean, it feels like we've been waiting for this game for six weeks. We're already over a week past New Year's, and here we are finally at the national championship game. Alabama Crimson Tide, Notre Dame Fighting Irish down in Miami. You will not find two more historical programs than these. They have history up and down the board. Alabama looking for back-to-back -back titles, looking for three out of the last four titles. The SEC looking to win another title. I mean, the state of Alabama, if they win tonight, has won, would win four titles in a row if you include Auburn in there. Unbelievable. Notre Dame has found new and creative ways to win each and every week, led by that defense in Manti Teo. Alabama is a 10.5 point favorite. I think the spread is a little too high. I think it's going to be closer than that. I think the defense is going to carry the day for both teams. It should be close. I don't think this is a vintage Alabama team as far as... I don't think this is a great Alabama team. I don't think this team is as good as last year or a couple years ago. I mean, Alabama, if you remember, they lost to A&M at home this year. Could have very well lost to LSU and could have very well lost to Georgia. They're not unbeatable. I think this game is close. I think Notre Dame has a chance. I think it's a defensive game. Will Notre Dame have enough offense to get the job done? I think it's going to be a close game. I say Alabama ekes it out 20-17. to 17. I think Notre Dame will have a chance in this game. I think they can possibly steal the game. Would not shock me if Notre Dame won. I am picking Alabama. I'll pick them 20-17. to 17. Very, very close game, though. Like I said, I think defense should carry the day on both sides. You should see some great hitting tonight, some good defensive uh, style ball. Should be a really, really nice game. I think it's going to be close. 
Now, a lot of the experts say no. They say Alabama's going to blow out Notre Dame. They say Notre Dame is, you know, it's going to be like 42-7. to 7. I don't see that at all. I think it's going to be a close game. And like I said, Alabama, this is not an, a great Alabama team. They are not a great team. I think they can be beat. I do think they eke it out here. I think Notre Dame hangs around. I think Notre Dame does have a shot in this game. Like I said, Alabama 20, Notre Dame 17 in your title game tonight. Must watch TV. You have to watch this game. These programs are so historic. You have to watch this game. I implore you guys, watch this game. It should be a hard-hitting, fun, defensive game. Alabama ekes it out tonight by three. So that wraps up today. You guys enjoy your games. Uh, tonight, as you can see, I still have a cold. This is like my third cold of the year. Maybe one day I will be feeling 100%. My voice is going as I'm talking here. Tomorrow we will recap the national championship game. Wednesday we'll do our NBA and our college basketball. Thursday, wall-to-wall -wall NFL. We'll cover all the games this weekend. So that's where we are this week. And, of course, we'll cover anything else that comes up in the sports world. You guys enjoy the games tonight. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Tuesday. Stay safe. Enjoy the national championship game tonight. Talk to you soon. Take care.